Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to yet another segment of ASAF Cafe. Once again, I'm your host, ASAF Adonai. It's 1.15 according to the watch here, so that'll make it easy to mm -hmm. keep track of time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're doing another one-on-one. -on -one. We have another guest coming in about an hour from now, and uh, we'll save that for him. But in the meantime, Affectionately, our aging rocker, Emmett. <laughs> yep, 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 indeed, yep. And once again, thanks for being part of this show. Oh, certainly, and, and certainly. That. Our regulars, um, Linda Brooks Curtis, I don't know if she'll be here today. And mm. Teresa, I haven't seen her lately. Yeah. I, I'm sure these lovely ladies are doing whatever they're doing. So mm -hmm. I'll have some of that secret ingredient. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> Thank you, uh, my friend. Yeah. Thank you. And here's uh, oh, M&M's here. Thanks. M&M's backwards is M&M's, you know. Yes, it's an anagram, I think they call it, yeah. Well, you know, um, M&M's, not to plug a product, but they're celebrating 75 years. Can fascinating, you yeah, fascinating. Yeah, 75 <coughs> years old. Oh, fascinating. And uh, speaking of M&M's, before we start, my favorite has always been the M&M's with the peanuts. Yeah, I guess I've never been a big M and M guy. I've had them as a kid. It's just eh, yeah. When you know. I was a kid, they had like the chocolate M and M. Yeah, no peanuts, and they were really tiny. Yeah. And then they started getting fancy when they put the nut in. They had, they put one little peanut in it. Cool. Now they've got M and M with mints, M and M with peanut butter, and amazing. You know, M and M with chocolate stuff. It, it's amazing. just amazing. <laughs> <laughs> thought you never thought you'd be talking about M and M's. Huh? I love it. <laughs> you want to start us off? Yeah. Heavenly Father, bless our time together and our drink and everything in Jesus' name. And on that note, uh, I'm gonna have an M and M. Wonderful. How was your Fourth of July, by the way? It was fun. Um, I was a little disappointed that they canceled the same here. The uh, show at the yeah, this definitely, year. definitely. But other than that, because um, you know I had bought that s smartphone last mm -hmm. month. And I was looking forward to taking pictures, but uh, I wasn't able to this year. Yeah, definitely. I know. Yeah, I just oh, I went to church and yeah, I got some flowers for my flower garden. You know, I have flower garden outside, so I got that pink some uh, pink grizzly and kind of did some of that. And plus, the Twilight Zone marathon was on. Oh, so you're on sci-fi. So I was just watching <laughs> sci-fi, Twilight Zone marathon, definitely. Yeah. Well, speaking of Fourth of July, the young lady, the two young ladies that were here last yes. week, Cheryl, um, she's raising her granddaughter Cheyenne, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I spent the fourth with those two ladies. Oh, they live next door to me. Yeah. And I normally don't eat beef hot dogs, but I made an exception because it was 4th of July, so Cheryl prepared, we had like these ballpark beef oh, hot yeah, dogs. Oh yeah, yeah. And a hot dog's not a hot dog unless it has relish, oh, yeah, definitely. mustard, and um, Absolutely. ketchup, so. Yeah. That's what I had. Wonderful. And it was wonderful. fun spending the Fourth of July with these. Oh, lovely absolutely. Ladies. Yeah. Um, Cheyenne is a real sweetie. She's only yep, twelve yep. years old. And, and uh, Cheryl is really another sweetie too. And I'm fortunate to have both of these young women that live next door. Wonderful. Yeah. And BJ, who was our guest, she lives downstairs, mm -hmm. but next door also. And it was her birthday. Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, I remember. She had a that. wonderful time. Wonderful. Being here. And you were a hit with those ladies. Too. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> So BJ and uh, Cheryl and Cheyenne, hello and thanks and uh, <laughs> so now um, you want some images? No, uh, all right. Well, I'll have one real quick. Uh, for all the viewing audience, if I seem groggy, you know, allergy season has been so bad this year. It seems every day I've got to take an antihistamine, so I took a couple. So you know, <laughs> I didn't have the non-drowsy formula. Yesterday when I was doing my show, I just kept coughing and coughing because. It was wet and it was a rainy day and the pollen town has been so bad that for some reason when it's rainy and there's pollen, I just, it's just terrible, you know? I know, yes. Yeah. <clears throat> some people suffer that, unfortunately, you know? And I haven't, it's been really bad this year. I don't know what's happened, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If I had a regular doctor, I'd probably get on, you know, make an appointment and get on some professional antihistamines, you know, the, the stuff that's not over the counter. Or an animal. Uh -huh. But then again, that I've heard that stuff can really knock you out. I mean, yeah. the professional grade stuff, but you're just basically in a trance all day. You know, the, the only. <laughs> well, just take your time and just relax and take it easy. Yeah. Now, what did you do on the fourth? Oh, like I said, yeah, I went to church and just watched the Twilight Zone. And oh, okay. So that, was that on MeTV? Oh, yeah, that was on Sci Fi. Oh, okay. the Sci Fi channel. They, they always have like a Twilight Zone. Fourth of July marathon, or like New Year's Eve, New Year's Day, you know? Mm -hmm. Got a lot of those recorded on tape, but my VCR 
broke, then I can't record anything. But yeah, I've got all of those on tape, you know, just wonderful. Yeah, those little, they just had it one for one day, you know. I see, all day long. Yeah, long. all day long. What time did it start? About 9 o'clock the evening prior to the 4th, and then it ran until, I guess, midnight or so, or maybe in the see. morning. Yeah, just, I'm not sure. I went to bed kind of early, yeah. But that's how I spent the fourth. But I didn't get to see hardly any fireworks. There were kind of a few outside. Someone was shooting, but that was it. You know? I know I was a little disappointed this year. Oh, I was, I was very disappointed. That, you know? Yeah. Maybe something will happen that we, we we don't know. We weren't there, you know. Yeah, yeah. I hope they have them next year. Yeah. Well, just give us something to look forward to a year from now. You know? Yeah, I really hope they have them next year because I can see them. I will go down a little bit from where I live, and I can actually see them. You know, just one of those things. You know, I don't see them very well, but. If you lived in the South Hills, you could see them real well, I'm sure. If you lived in the South Hills or some hill where you could overlook Missoula and had a fancy... Oh, man, you could really see them, yep. Yeah. That'd be a treat, yeah. What I like to do... Oh, I forgot. We can talk about that. I forgot. You know what I like to do in seeing fireworks? I love to pretend that the Earth is under alien attack or some other part of the galaxy. And I go... Because it's all exploding and... Bright colors. Do, do, must. We're in our alien. Do, 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 do. And I destroy them. It's all lasers and they're all you know, spaceship exploding brilliantly. Like, I love doing that. Laser. Do, 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 do. Let's see. That's what I do. Yep. Yeah. We're on our alien attack. Do, 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 do. Fascinating. That's what I do. I sounds like a. Do, do, do. Isn't that fascinating? I even do that at the mall. I just like that. I don't know how it goes. In front of everybody, yeah. Well, um, you know, speaking of Independence Day, can you believe America is 240 years old? Amazing, yep. The other day. Yep, amazing, yep. It's, it's, it's amazing because, you know, this country is like a very relatively young it country is. in comparison to the other countries oh, yeah. in the world. And it's just really amazing. And when I did that Wake Up Missoula, mm -hmm. before I did that segment, I talked about being thankful to live in a country oh, where yeah. you can worship God. Yeah, absolutely. And you have all these freedoms in this mm. country. I mean, I'm not trying to get all political and everything. Exactly. This is the truth. Exactly. In the United States of America, you have friends, mm -hmm. you have family, mm -hmm. you can worship God, you can read the Bible. You don't have to worry about getting your head cut off because you're Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> so I sympathize with all the other nations oh, in the absolutely. world that don't necessarily experience the freedoms that we do in this mm, country yeah yeah it's a blessing definitely definitely because you know what i like to do you know i bought that smartphone last month i'm yes. not gonna turn it on but I i'm gonna make a point you know at night i'll put the bible on the king james bible wonderful on this thing, and i turn it down and you know if you lay it down flat it blocks the light but the sound comes out of the speaker and i can listen to the king james bible at night when I'm sleeping. Wonderful. And it's just a wonderful thing, you know. Yeah. It, I, and I just feel so blessed, you know, because some most people can't do that in other countries. Oh other yeah. Nations. <laughs> and definitely, definitely, yeah. I don't believe in luck or anything like that, but no, I, I, no. I think it's a blessing. Oh, it is. It is. Yeah. And you know, I've always wondered why does the United States, the United States, have some, that kind of freedom? That's a mystery to me. It's the Constitution. Yeah, I don't yeah, want to get I know, political. I know. Say where that is being trying to wrote it. This this is not my uh, show, but yeah, it's founded in the Constitution. You know, and at least we've got it, the framework for it. And know? I think it's founded on some um, Christian values too. And yeah, I appreciate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Play Santa Lucia. Mm -hmm. We've also had a lot of great, uh, you know, artists like the Lawrence Welk came from America, and Liberace and some others, you know, were born into. The, we've made a lot of entertainment and, you know, yeah. TV shows about it's incredible. Well, you, you know, know. Liberace actually he comes from Polish mm -hmm. ancestry. Yeah, wasn't he born in the United States or was he not born in the United no, States? No, I think he was born in the U.S. Yeah, but yeah. I think his parents oh yeah, yeah, yeah. From Poland, his father was a professional French horn player, mm -hmm. and uh, his mom was just his mom. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the point I'm making is just amazing how much freedom. I mean, I'm not trying to get political. It's, yeah, just, exactly. it's just a fact. Well, that it is. It is. You know. For whatever reason, the United States is one of the 
few mm-hmm. countries in the world that just has tremendous freedom. Oh yeah. If you go to North Korea, it's terrible. If you go to Iran, yeah. terrible. Just, I know it. I know. You know I, yeah. I lived overseas when I was a kid, so yeah. I don't. I don't presume on life. I don't presume on the good Lord. I take it one step at a time, Absolutely. and I'm just thankful. Yeah, yeah. To live in this country. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know this country has issues, like every country. Yeah, but yeah. At least I can listen to the Bible. Yeah, when exactly. I go to sleep at night. Yeah. And it's just such a peaceful feeling. Yeah. <coughs> you know, and, and what I like about it, I like this when you hear the Bible, they're not giving commentary. Yeah, exactly. It's just the Bible, and right. it's a wonderful thing. You just sleep and you wake up in the middle of the night and you just hear the Bible. And you exactly. Just, it just gives your home a peaceful atmosphere to me. And yeah. I really like that. Absolutely. Or if I don't listen to the Bible, I could put on some Christian music. Yeah, and, exactly. Oh, it's just it's just nothing like it. Yeah, and I sympathize absolutely. with these other nations that yeah. don't have that. You know, if I could wave a magic wand, <laughs> yeah. I'd let everybody... I would ask... You know what I would do? You remember in the, in the, New, the Old Testament... Uh, Elijah and Elisha. Mm-hmm. Well, the final request that Elisha asked Elijah was for a double portion. Yes. <clears throat> so where I'm going with this is, if if I could, I would want everybody to experience a double portion of what I've been blessed exactly, with. Exactly. Like living in a country, freedom. Yes. To listen to the Bible at night. Mm-hmm. To pray to God, not have yeah. to, you know. Wonder about someone breaking into my home. Yeah, exactly. You know, stuff like that. So. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I, I, that's what I would, I would want. I would want every person to experience a double portion of what I've been blessed with. Exactly. May not necessarily be the piano, maybe, or but whatever works for them. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Like that. Plus, and, that would give you protection at home. That probably gives you protection at home. It blesses your home to have the Bible. You know, that's not what on the table or have you know, religious articles or prayer or you know, Christian music. It blesses your home, you know? Well, I just find it, I just look at it as just peaceful. It peaceful is, atmosphere. yes, it is. Yeah, I mean, you can listen to country music, I suppose, at night, but that would be as no, fun. No, you know? no, no. <laughs> you know? yeah. And I'm not picking on country music, but that stuff can make you cry, some of the stuff. Oh, you know? yeah. Like that, what is that? You ever hear that song by Loretta Lynn? Do you know who she is? No. A famous country singer in the past. Mm. Well, there's a song that she, I found it amusing. She's singing a song, You're Not Woman Enough to Take My Man. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> amazing. I look at it like this. If if a lady takes your man, you never had him in the first bingo, place. Bingo, <laughs> bingo. <laughs> yeah. But that was interesting to listen to Loretta Les singing that song. Yeah, it, it, yeah. It's, it was like, uh, I, I don't know all the lyrics to the song, but um, it has something to do about She's having a confer- uh, she's having a confrontation with another woman, and I guess it's bam, yeah, yeah. right? And she just Loretta Lynn's character that she's singing about in the song tells this other lady, "Look, I love my husband. You're not. You don't have anything that he'll want. You can't take him away from me, kind of thing. You're not woman enough to take him away. You can you can mm. read into that any way you want. But. Yeah, yeah." <laughs> And I think Loretta Lynn is a fine singer. Oh, yeah, yeah. But the point that I'm making is a lot of that country music, man, just oh, yeah, yeah. lyrics, those storylines. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, oh, yeah. And I know it It talks about everyday life, and I understand that. Yeah, but, yeah. <clears throat> boy, I, I think if I had kids, I'd rather have my kids listening to the, the Christian stuff. The yeah, stuff. yeah, yeah. <laughs> God, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Instead of wondering about some woman trying to take yeah, her husband absolutely. away or yeah, some yeah. crazy thing like that, it, it, it's. But you know, country music in its own right is fun. Oh yeah, it is. Really older. You know, I, I speaking of country music for a moment. I used to watch a show called Hee Haw when I was a I kid. I love Hee Haw. I love Hee Haw. I grew and up on Hee Haw. Yeah, I thought that was a silly, I goofy that. show, but it was it was fun, silly, you know. It had I the country it. yeah flair, but they had some excellent artists of oh, the Oh, they past. did, yeah. People like Buck Owens, Roy Clark. Now I'm sure Grandpa already, Jones, yeah, remember Grandpa yeah, Jones, yeah. And uh just all those other cast of people at Hee Haw that was so fun. And they had that donkey, Hee Haw! Yeah. I've got some episodes <laughs> of Hee Haw on D V D. I got it from a Cracker Barrel. <laughs> really great. I love Hee Haw, yeah. Yeah, that that show was fun to watch and um I think it just, 
I think it just took you away from yeah, it did, the yeah. world or reality. It really did, yeah. And even though it was country flavored, they didn't necessarily sing all that so-called sad country. Yeah, that, they didn't. <clears throat> a lot of stuff. And you know what I liked about the early country music? It didn't sound too much like rock and roll. It had a like a backwood backwoodsy yeah, yeah. atmosphere to me. Yeah, yeah, it did, yeah. And that's fun. Actually, fun. I actually prefer the newer country because I even went through a phase, I'm not getting political, but I was really depressed about the, some of the political events, and I talked about this on my show. Um, punk rock wasn't doing it for me, and I didn't feel like easy listening. What could I listen to? I know, I'm so upset about the state of America. The sad, sad songs of country music would do it for me. So I got hooked on country ever since. I often don't listen to country. I kind of got out of that. But I like the newer country because a lot of the newer country is, I'm more redneck than you. I live in a more dilapidated <laughs> trailer court than you. Neener, neener. I drive a truck. I love my truck and my girlfriend and my alcohol. And I love my truck. Tw uh, twing, twing. I just love that. That really, I'm proud to be a redneck. I'm a redneck heck and I'm proud of you. It's right. It's got a gun in my truck. I'm a r I love that. That's awesome. That is awesome. I just love that. And the older country didn't have that. And I kind of like the guitar and, you know, talking about down home stuff from flyover country, uh -huh. going to church, having barbecues. My kids are in the 4-H club and I just love the average music for the common well, average know, person. You what's know? fun about music is there's so many varieties there of are. music. There when are. I was at the conservatory, all they wanted to do was have have us concentrate on nothing but the classics. Yeah. I'm talking Chopin, Beethoven. And there's nothing wrong with that music, but you know, since I explained, since the Romantic era, there are so many forms of music to mm -hmm. choose from. Mm -hmm. And I had a real problem when I was at the conservatory that all I had to do was Chopin and Mozart, and there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. Yeah. But you got country music, you even got rap music, which I'm not a fan oh, of. Oh, I'm not a fan. I hate works, rap music. It works for some people. There's yeah. rap music, there's funk, soul, R&B, rhythm and blues, they call it. There's um, gospel. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I hate gospel music. I'm talking about the old-fashioned oh, yeah, gospel the old... music. <laughs> the Negro spirituals, mm. they call it. I mean, the, my point is there's so many choices and varieties mm -hmm. that's why just to be at the conservatory and say you have to do just such and such yeah yeah i had a real problem with definitely that. i did and so like i i shared the story that me and some of the students there we just rebelled against i'm like let's sit up here playing this beethoven all exactly. day long <laughs> exactly because <laughs> you know you go like let's say um let's say you're playing for some young some young teenager you know mm -hmm. They want they want to hear something like this. Um, they might want to hear something like this. I won't do the whole thing. <coughs> see what I mean? Something like this. See? Mm -hmm. Ain't that cool? Yeah. Bluesy kind of flavor. Something like that. Mm -hmm. They're not gonna necessarily want to hear. I mean, and I have nothing against this song. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna stop right there. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. But the point that I'm making, I may not be necessarily a fan of country music, but the point is there. There's so many to choose from. Exactly. Yeah. And I admit there are some country singers that I really get a kick out of oh, watching, definitely. especially the ones from the past. Yeah. I, I don't know sir, if I really watch because I've well, like Buck Owens again. You know, yeah, it was oh, yeah, always well, fun to watch him play the guitar with a sparkly jacket. Oh, definitely. It yeah. kind of reminded me of Liberace, but just playing the guitar. Oh, yeah, definitely. Or, well, I did like Johnny Cash, I admit. Yeah. He he was an interesting singer to uh -huh. me, and his legacy seems to be still going on. Yeah. Two of my favorites are Alabama. Mm -hmm. I like the brand Alabama. You know, if, if you want to play in Texas, you got to have a fiddle in the band and that kind of thing. I got hooked on that. Yeah. And I love Alan Jackson. Alan yeah. Jackson. He Joe is a fine singer, but yeah. that kind of country is more modernized, mm -hmm. to me at least. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's, that's fine. Exactly, exactly. Because, you know, when you think of Grandpa Jones. Oh, I love uh, Grandpa Jones. Yeah, I know. He was a funny guy. But yeah. That kind of country to me seemed more older country, mm -hmm. more <laughs> like you hear them singing. You can imagine you're out in the field, exactly. Or the, you know the the backfields or something. Yeah, exactly. The hills of 
whatever, whatever state you live in. Mm-hmm. Whereas Alabama, those groups, that's fine, but that's more modernized. Yeah, it is, but at, at least the, you know? the lyrics are still the same, you know. And some other the song, now you're getting anything but country music that I've heard on the radio now. I don't know, something about my heart and soul is in the boondocks, you know. I don't know, my heart and soul is in, I just love that stuff. Yeah, stuff but or, see, that's my point. There's there's so many musics around the world that yeah. just, I even like some of the other musics of other countries, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I love Irish music. Yeah, that's I that's love fun with that. Irish music. Oh, I'm going to yeah. play a Coming to the Rye short version of it. Let me yeah. do that. I love the jigs. I love the reels of Irish music. I just love that stuff, you know. What else? Oh, yeah. This I love German right. music. I mm-hmm. love, like, German polka music. I love that stuff, yeah. you know? Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I love Irish music. Beautiful. <sighs> Something like that. That's called Coming to the Rye. I love it. I love the classical yeah. version of it. But, you know, I, I like all these different musics. Mm-hmm. Like, the Asian musics. You ever listen to Vietnamese music? <laughs> no, I never have. I have never listened to it. I, I couldn't describe it. it, it it's it's, uh, you know, it, they always seem to have like this lady that. Uh, oh yeah. It's just really interesting. I can't dis- I can't imitate it, but it's 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 just different. No. Asian music is beautiful music to me, which is very different, and I, yes. I like listening to it. Wonderful. Well, as you know, they even have toddler tunes on channel 926 on, you know, Charter. They've got music for little toddlers yeah, now. You were, ta- you were talking about that. Is it the, uh, the modern music in, in, in children form or something yes, like that? Yes, not only the modern music in children form, but even just other artists that, they, it doesn't always have to sound punk rock, but it's just like, you know, the wheels on the bus go round and round, round and round. You know, stuff about, for, you know, babies and, you know, a whole bunch of other stuff. I can't describe it or something that toddlers would go, enjoy, like going out to the playground or hanging at the playground or, you well, know. you know, the, I think... Um, I love it. I love that stuff. Well, if you want to get kind of cultural, I think it's a good idea to expose young children to classical music. It is, actually. It's you know, like they important. say, if you have an... Uh, a one-year-old, for example, or a two-year-old, you can just put some classical music on very quietly at night and expose yes. your children at. I think I think that I guess what I'm saying is it's good to be well rounded. It is, it is. It music. Is. Even it is. if it's not your thing, per yeah. se. So and I, I know you're not a fan of jazz, I understand that, but I, I, I love smooth jazz, just, yeah, I office like the smooth jazz. jazz yeah. Yeah, but I'm not a fan of that the other stuff, you know. With the yeah, that's stuff. called bebop. I didn't uh, tell you the, yeah, the name uh, of that. That's that screaming lightning quick yeah. kind of yeah, definitely. Yeah, I know. Yeah. But that works for some people. Oh, it does, yeah. I personally wouldn't want to be sitting in a concert all day long listening to that stuff, but bebop works for some people. But I'm, I'm in agreement with you. I prefer the smooth, jazz, yeah. easy listening. Definitely. Jazz, um, you know, that kind of stuff. And they've got a lot of groups out there that play that kind of, I call it Kenny G music. I yeah, guess. yeah, I love Kenny G, yeah, very good, very good. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. Nor can I, yeah. It's just fun, and then there was another famous musician. Well, there are a lot of famous musicians from the past that are known for playing, I guess, smooth jazz? Yeah. Well, I think it started with Miles Davis, uh-huh. the African-American trumpeter mm-hmm. of the past. Mm-hmm. He did a lot of smooth, Easy listening music. Wonderful. Yeah. Look at this song called, um, I think it's called So What It Goes Something Like This. Uh, at least if I can figure it out. Hold on. It, goes, it went something like. Isn't that cool? Yeah. Something like that. Mm-hmm. Something like that. Yeah. Isn't that cool? That's yeah, just it way is. cool. It is. It's just, it's just kind of an easy listening song. Yeah. Well, that's not really a piano song, but that's a song called So Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the thing of those titles, you know, I, I have to admit, some of these jazz oh, songs, they all, come up with these those incredible, incredible titles. titles. Yeah, yeah. Like, So What? That is yeah, the name exactly. of that song. Let me try it again. 
Exactly. Something like, yeah. 9.43, you know, on Charter, they have the smooth jazz and they all have these Yeah, and they, they just had these, these, yeah. these insane titles yeah, for these yeah. songs. It's, it's just amazing, so. Yeah. But, I mean, I'm not a trumpet player, but Miles Davis, mm. I think, would probably be one of the best jazz players in mm. history. Because he didn't necessarily always have all that lightning. Oh, definitely, yeah. Stuff that just works your ears and your nerves. Yeah, like, definitely. Yeah. Like that "So What" tune and some of them other songs that he's done throughout his life. They were more smooth jazz area. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And of course, Kenny G. You know, oh yeah, I, I like him. He he plays what's called a soprano. I think it's in the saxophone family. Instead of playing the sax, mm -hmm. like. No, yeah, 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 he plays that straight looking. Oh yeah, yeah. and I thing. think they call it a soprano. It, yeah, it's, a, yeah. it's a sax. Yeah, but it just looks cool when you watch Absolutely, him with that yeah. thing. He's doing something like this, uh, and he makes all those beautiful sounds. Mm -hmm. Another, um, oh yeah, there's just so many. Um, yeah, definitely. But you know, some this I'm just saying that there's so many types of music. Exactly. Everywhere, whether it's European music, German music. Polkas, um, religious music, organ music. There's just so many to choose from. That's why I don't think you should just lock a person into. Then that's where I was going with this. Exactly, time. exactly. I don't think you should just lock a person into one type of music. Absolutely. And that's what I like to, you know, I, I, uh, I just like different art forms. Exactly. Even if I can't sing or play them, mm -hmm. they're fun. Yeah. And of course, as you all know, I'm a retired punk rocker. I don't listen to punk rock as much as I used to, but I, the punk rock movement was one emotion, frustration, anger, etc. Oh, yeah, that is that. important. Uh -huh. That is so important. Average at the political system, frustration about conformity of society and their yeah. social rules. <laughs> and it was wonderful. <laughs> and there were a lot of fun punk rock songs and that kind of thing. You know, just. But yeah, that wonderful note of frustration, or you know, when the, the pistol well, saying "God save the queen," that was fantastic. If you think about it, I don't think punk rock was any different than the music of the past in a sense, as far as against maybe culture. I mean, yeah. they had the folk tunes of the '60s. Yeah, that's true. Basically, yes, you're saying, right. I guess the same thing if you wanted to get technical, like Peter Paul and Mary and yeah. Bob Dylan. Yeah. And, and but this was more um, angry. It was you know, I know it, it was took anger. a different approach instead of the folk tune. Yeah, it was approach. just anger, anger. It was but I, I think they you know? were basically saying the yeah, same yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, kind of, yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. And I've I've listened to some punk music in the past. Yeah. I don't know a lot about it, but I understood it. I I love it. You know, I just I just got hooked on it. I just you know love it because of what it stands for and what it says. It's yeah. just. Wonderful. I just no, since you're into that, um, whatever happened to the Smashing Pumpkins? I remember. Um, them. I don't know. They, I wouldn't call them punk rock. I would call them um, alternative. Okay. Or college rock. I don't know. It was. I would call it college rock, alternative college rock, kind of a difference. I don't know. I never liked the Smashing Pumpkins. They bored me. <clears throat> Well, they were very popular, I remember. Yeah, I know, but I just I don't like the... I, I've never liked college rock. It, it didn't have any anger. There was no anger and no passion, no hatred of society, no hatred of the government or political stuff or the rich versus poor. Just kind of tame music, I thought, you know. So was that basically the um, message of punk music was... Um, yes. An anger against uh, the against so people, but... Right, against society, conformity, the government, mm -hmm. you know, the rich versus poor, you know, for these rich people, well, break all the rules and we can't, oh, it's just horrible, just blah, 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 you know. And that makes sense to me, you know, especially if you're poor or you're caught up in bad situations. Or oh, I understand that, yeah, I'm not being head. critical, I was just exactly, trying to understand exactly, that Exactly, exactly, yeah. But, um, they don't have a lot of punk music out anymore, do no, they? No, they don't. No, it's very hard. Is kind of it is. I'm somewhere. afraid. So, the, the younger kids that are coming in mm -hmm. more think about, about it in terms of liberal mm -hmm. issues rather than alienation from society. You know, they'll be more the politically correct kind of liberal social issues and social. And I can't get in. I, I can't understand that. I can't well, really relate know, to that, you know. When pol I don't want to get too far into political, but I'll make a quick comment. Mm -hmm. When that first came out, I understood it. Punk rock? No, no, no I'm talking about being political correct. Oh, okay, yeah. I understood it. Mm -hmm. But it got to a point where, in my judgment, it was over. Oh, absolutely. Because I never it liked it in the first point, point, but now it's just insane. Well, no, I understood it as far as mm -hmm. its initial. Mm -hmm. But it's at a point now where you offend 
every just every nitpicking, oh, yeah. and it gets to the point where to me it's like confusion. Yeah, it is. It is. And it's just ridiculous. I just hope that they'll fix that. Maybe. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But anyway, um, I never even liked Nirvana, and I don't even like what's that other band that uh, came to town. I can't even remember their name, but. There, there are a lot of college rock bands. What they do is they rock out, like maybe you'll have someone with long hair and uh -huh. a baseball cap on backward going and trying to rock it, but they're not they're not angry. They don't talk about r r the system and the establishment. Oh, I see. Well, it, you know, the, and it's you're making me thing. think of that, that character on Star Trek. Again. Yeah. He seemed a little angry, I think. But that was comical, though. Yeah, it was, but that was punk rock. He was a punk rocker, and that yeah. was a real... That got me into punk rock, by the way. Yeah. That, well, that was punk rock all the way. That was perfect. Let's have fun with that. Let's see if I can find that. Yeah, I hate. I just love that song. Let's have fun with that. Let's see if this thing will let me do it. Um, did that song have a title? Yeah, I hate you. It was I hate you by um, Edge of Etiquette. I hate you. Let's yeah. see if it'll show up here. That was perfect punk rock. That was that was the name perfect. of the song. Yeah, I hate you. Yeah. And it's etiquette. Edge of etiquette. Let me see if it'll do it on here. Let's have fun with that. I'm gonna put edge of headed. Uh, Etiquette, yeah. I think that's how you spell it. Mm -hmm. And I never liked the the Seattle grunge scene, the Seattle scene, the grunge music like Soundgarden or you know I never liked that either. Okay, let's see if this will show up. Uh, oh, here it is, Star Trek. Um, oh, here's the scene right here. I'm gonna see. That's called I. I hate you. Yeah. This <laughs> should pick up. I love that. Let's have fun with this. <laughs> you might turn to that music down. Yeah. <laughs> You can get in trouble with the, the song. Yeah. No, but really, that was a fun. Oh, that was. That was just such a fun scene on. Um, yeah, I loved it, and it was pure punk rock. That's yeah. what the attitude is. You I know, know and, I, and I understand. I that. loved it, and it got really me into punk rock back then, and just loved it. And I've been trying to search for punk rock songs ever since. Like, there's some similar, but not nearly like that. That's one of my favorites, you know? Yeah. You heard it here on the cafe, yep. But I just, you know, when, when they um, had that scene on Star Trek. Oh, I was just laughing so hard. It, I was it, just it was funny to me. Yeah, it was. Because it just was the perfect yeah. rebellious character. Yeah, it was. And exactly. when he gives Captain Kirk the finger, that I was kind of... I was laughing. I, I was laughing. And I had never heard punk rock before. And I was just laughing so hard. I had tears coming out of my eyes. I was just laughing so hard. Yeah. In the theater when I first saw it, I was like, I'm hooked, you know. But, you know, getting back to that kind of music, it's really no different. Every generation, Liberace once said this, uh -huh. every generation seems to have their brand of music. That, yes. That's something that kids listen to until they mature. Yeah. And I have to agree with you. I know those lyrics are a little heavy. Yeah. But. Well, it's frustration. It's one yeah, of those frustrations. Yeah, I realize that, you know? but it's, it, 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 it. Speaks volumes it as does. far as it does. The message that it does. that song is trying to portray. Yeah, it does. Yeah, you that's one. Listen to a song, "I Hate You." That's something that yeah. a young teenager would probably. Absolutely. I wouldn't recommend it, but oh, I would. But yeah. well, you know what I mean. I mean, yeah. but I, every I think every teenager goes through those phases in yeah, their yeah. lives. I think their bodies are changing. Yes. The peer pressures with their friends growing up. Cause yeah. he, I went, well, maybe not to that degree, but I had my share of peer pressure growing up. Like, for example, mm -hmm. when I was in high school, yeah. we, uh, how can I explain this? Our school was up on a small hill, uh -huh. and there was a tiny hill that came down here like this, and then there was the street where cars went by. Mm -hmm. So they have what was called Smoker's Corner, mm -hmm. and all these like freshmen and sophomores in high school, they'd be sitting up on the hill during the lunch hour lighting up. 
In those days, they didn't have restrictions on cigarettes yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> like they do today. And so all the rebellious type of that time, they, mm -hmm. they weren't necessarily punk rockers, because I don't think that movement was No, it probably there. wasn't. It was just, yeah. But like Liberace said, the generation of um, kids going through what early teens or preteens go through. So they'd be like about 20 kids sitting out there lighting up while these cars are going by. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> During the lunch hour. I love these that. kids, these kids going to have a cheeseburger. They sitting up there lighting up. Uh, I love it, yeah. and, and it was like this hill, right? So, and there was like these two churches right across the street. Uh -huh. and, no, and no telling what they were thinking. Yeah. But it was like this big street. See? Mm -hmm. And they and they'd be sitting out there like cattle. These kids just lighting up, sitting on this hill, just talking, and you know they're not bothering no one. Exactly. Just, they're just being kids. Yeah, exactly. You know, I find it interesting though. Like, I, and I I talked about this on one of my early shows, the Alternative mm -hmm. About Society, about the tra I think I called it the tragedy of the alternative movement. You know, for mm -hmm. it's like the kids. It, it, the alternative music is so, it's rock and roll, but it has no message. It's like kids don't listen to rebellious rock music anymore that rebels against authority. It's all this, I don't know, kind of lonely music. Like, we don't know our identity, we don't know who we are. And I feel bad for the, you know, the uh, Generation Y and the Millennials that were listening to the alternative stuff. So it's like they had no ID, identity, and they wanted to break away, but they couldn't. And I thought it was very... Tragic. It's just it's rock music of a form like Soundgarden, but it has no power. It has no power to me, you know. Nothing really to say. You know, I guess I want music that has something to say. There's something beautiful like Gordon Lightfoot and some of uh -huh. his poetry, or something angry like what we just listened to. But it's gotta have to say something. I, it, I can't, it, 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 it can't just be nothing, you know. It's saying something about nothing. Now speaking of music, um, I'm slightly changing, but I'm on that topic. Right. For the. Uh, Fourth of July, I, I found this really amusing. You know that Christian radio station? Yes. There's this program, this comedy program called the Darren Streblo Comedy mm. Hour. I don't know mm -hmm. if you ever heard it. Never heard of. Yeah. <laughs> they had this comedian on there because it was Fourth of July, right? And he was talking about what it'd be like to sing the national anthem like some of these singers in the past. Mm -hmm. And so he did this imitation of Bob Marley singing the national anthem. <laughs> and they called him the reggae man. Yeah. Uh, oh, say, can you see? But you don't anyway, yeah. you know, kind of, and it was just the funniest yeah. thing, because he was playing this reggae Jamaican kind of music, like, oh, say, can you see? By the dawn's only light, yeah. you know, and he, he sounded just like Bob Marley. I thought that was so funny. It would be, yeah. And then he he did this Bob Dylan version of the national anthem. Oh, say, can you see? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. You know, like that. It, uh, Bob Dylan was just. Yeah. Bob Dylan, he, he was just different. Mm -hmm. And so this comedian, I don't know who this comedian was, I didn't catch his name, but um, he did a lot of singers from the past, um, like the folk singers, and he did, he imitated music in their style, what it would be like if they did the mm -hmm. national anthem. Mm -hmm. it, it was so funny. I'll have to look it up and let you yeah. hear it. It, it, it. it was just funny. Just, yeah, definitely. He didn't like sing the whole song, he just did like, like a piece of a verse just you know, imitating these people. And, but you know, the sun, this up, it's, it's I, I guess, like Liberace said, every generation goes through whatever yeah, they yeah. go through, whatever their thing is, whether it's boogie woogie or yeah. punk rock or yeah. whatever they call it, you know, yeah, yeah. every generation. And then, of course, children, you know, teenagers, when they mature eventually. Yeah. You know, the interesting thing is, though, Punk rock, even in my generation, technically my generation was the punk rock generation, at least in the bigger cities. But because I'm generation, I'm of the, I'm, I'm generation X, pretty much. I'm pretty much. Yeah, generation. I understand that. Yeah. But it still wasn't very popular with most of the kids. Punk rock really never caught on. Most people, like especially in Missoula or Idaho, would listen to regular rock and roll or Z100. They would never listen to punk rock. They say, "What the heck? Is this? this is weird. It's weird and it's horrible." And they wanted conformity. Yeah. My generation really wanted conformity. And but I think young people, really... instead of conformity, I think, I would say young people just want to be heard. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I, right. I think that yeah. maybe they don't know how to express that because they're so young and they haven't matured and they yeah, go yeah. through music or something. Yeah, they do. They I think you're right. I think you're be, absolutely right. They just want know? to be heard and understood. Yeah. And there's a saying that, you know, teenagers like to be disciplined, even though they may resist it. Uh -huh. Or like, for example, um, let's say you got a teenager, 
he's gonna go out with his friends and you you tell him certain things like yeah. don't do this don't do such and such they might roll their eyes and you know but I think deep inside kids yeah want to be told what to do and how to do it mm -hmm. I'm talking about early preteens yeah, yeah things like that but I mean I'm not a parent but I've heard it said uh -huh. In the parental world, that if a child is ignoring you, or yeah. he's really listening. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's just going through that. Yeah, like, yeah. Trying to find himself and want to do things on his own, but he's listening. Yeah. He may not. You may not think he's listening. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. So I, I don't know. I just. Yeah. You know, I never succumbed to peer pressure because I never wanted to conform to the group. Like I said, I was always doing in high school my own weird thing. Did you? Did you? Did you? Singing or watching. Well, you know, I did my share of rebellion too, but in different ways. Mm -hmm. With me and my birth mom, um, she just always wanted me to be whatever normal is. Yeah, I know. I've never been normal. I uh, and I, I said this in a documentary when they did a documentary on me. What is normal? Yeah, exactly. I don't know. It's like uh, I guess in our culture, normal is you're supposed to grow up, get a job, mm -hmm. be married, and have a bunch of kids by the time you're 22 or 23, yeah, yeah. or you're not normal. Yeah, it's bizarre. Yeah, I just yeah. And I used to do things like I I like to wear different clothes when I was coming. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I, I guess what I'm saying is I didn't like to necessarily do everything no, no, I everybody was doing exactly. because they were doing it. Exactly. That was my version of rebelling. Maybe exactly. it wasn't a, a cultural thing or a government thing, but yeah. that I had, had my share of that. Yeah. And of course, you know, back when I was a teenager, you know, when everyone was listening to Z100 or rock music, I was listening to Easy Listening, you know, for yeah. my homework. I really didn't get into punk or become a punk rocker until I was 25. Uh huh. Because, of course, my parents would never let me get a mohawk anyway. I didn't know enough about it. When I knew enough about it, this was the way I could go, and I was, you know, on, living on my own. And uh -huh. only just a couple, couple of years ago um, did I retire from the punk rock movement just because of health uh -huh. reasons. That was when I was 46, I guess, so a couple of years ago. Uh -huh. That would have been 2014, I guess. I guess I officially made the decision, you know, on Thanksgiving Day 2014, I guess, or was it? Uh -huh. 2013. Now I can't remember. Well, yeah. my mind is going bad, but it was a couple of years ago. It wasn't that long ago, you know? Yeah, well, oh, what was I going to say? Um, but I understand is what I'm saying. Exactly. I, I may not have children, but I understand. And I think that when kids go through things like that, just listen. Exactly, exactly. Don't necessarily condemn them. Exactly. Or necessarily criticize them. Just try to get inside their head and see what they're going through. Mm -hmm. That would... I mean, I, I have not raised any kids, but I'm saying this based on just experiences of people I've known that had children or whatever, just, or like even focus on the family. They just oh, yeah, want absolutely. to be heard. They want yes. to be understood, even if it's crazy. Yeah, exactly. And I think every teen goes through that. Yeah, definitely. And, you know, growing up, I just... I just did not want to do mm -hmm. things the way everybody necessarily did. Mm -hmm. And it always got me in trouble with my birth mother because she couldn't understand that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I didn't smoke or drink or anything. I'm not talking about that, but just, yeah. you know, like I grew up with a bunch of friends, you know, since we were kids. Mm -hmm. As we were getting in our teens, they were doing certain things a certain way. It's almost like leave it to Beaver, just, you know, exactly. certain things a certain way. And Asaph was found himself doing slightly different. Yeah, definitely. So my mom was always trying to mold me into that image uh -huh. of... You know, mm. what you're supposed to mm. do, which I didn't. Yeah, absolutely. I'm just glad I got out on my own so I could find my own way in life and yeah. do things I wouldn't have been able to do otherwise, like become a hardcore punk rocker with a mohawk and leather jacket <laughs> and chains and <laughs> yeah, listen to music like that all the time, you know? Uh-huh, uh-huh. And besides one thing, you know, you know, maybe it's just getting older, but I have so much easy listening now and so Gordon Lightfoot and Neil Diamond. I listen to more of that than I do punk rock. I mean, I still love punk rock. I still have the albums, that kind of thing. But yeah. it's just kind of like, maybe I've just mellowed out in my older age. Age does take a toll on you. It takes a toll on you mentally and physically, and you just change as you age. I don't understand it myself, but, you know, that just happens, you know? Once you get older, you do, ch you know? Yeah. You know, you're not the, really the same person as you were when you were 25, you know? Oh, yeah. You're just not, you know? 
there are probably a lot of people who, who, who you know, I just, even though I still do my show, probably don't recognize me and wonder, you know, where the punk rock guy is. Well, I am that guy. I still have the beliefs, but yeah, it, just, I just because I don't have the mohawk anymore doesn't mean that I'm a, a changed my beliefs. I'm I a different it, person, yeah. you know. But probably a lot of people don't recognize me and they wonder where's that guy on TV with the mohawk. Well, you know, it's kind of sad when they just categorize you as someone with a mohawk. They only recognize you for mohawk, and that's all mm -hmm. they recognize you for, you know? Yeah, well, you know, I'll tell this story. <laughs> uh, I think I shared this story once before. Mm -hmm. There was this... Let me backtrack. I used to play at a, at the Billings Hotel. This was uh -huh. probably 20 years ago. And this is a true story. There was this kid. He was about as punk rock... Uh -huh. As you can get, this kid had spiky hair. Wow. He had the leather jacket, the chains, all, all, and he was just a kid. He was, I think he was like 16, punk rock, and his parents happened to be there. And I noticed this young man came up to me and was just listening to the music. I didn't care to point in head, you know. It didn't matter to me. So we're just listening. Uh, he was just listening to me play, and he liked the way I play, and I asked him if he played, and, you know, we were just talking, and we had a good time. Wonderful. I said, young man, if you excuse me, I'm going to go t take a break. Mm -hmm. You want to play a tune, go right ahead. And this is a true story. This, this, I mean, we're not talking a little punk rock. Yeah, exactly. We are talking just like that, that character on right, Star Trek. Right, exactly. He was like, exactly. He was thin, kind of tall, had the pointed hair, shaved head. He had every piece of... You yeah, know, exactly. Leather coat. And this young man sat behind that concert grand piano and played the Chopin Minute Waltz. Amazing. And I turned around and I was like, and yeah. his parents were smiling. <laughs> and I walked at this boy's parents. I was like, how did your son learn how to play the piano like that? He was like all over the instrument. He, he sounded just like Liberace. He just wow. Had the, he just had the, 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 the look. And his parents, well, he's just going through what he's going through, but this kid can play Chopin and, and everything else. I mean, he played that better than most of these, what do you call, kids that are supposed to be normal. I mean, this kid was, he had clean, accurate technique. Wow. And he was, oh my goodness, I had never seen anything like that. It's the, he played the Chopin Minute Waltz, and this kid didn't miss a beat. Wow. And then he gets up from the piano and, and uh, he sits down and listens to me and I was like humbled because I, I, I've never actually took time to learn that song. Right, I know right. it when I hear it. Mm -hmm. And um, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. And that taught me a valuable lesson. You cannot judge a book by its cover. Absolutely. Absolutely. That kid probably could have gone to Hollywood. He was just the kid was probably like a sophomore in high school going mm -hmm. through and he had the rough. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that kid sat up behind that piano at that hotel and sounded like Liberace, and he had everybody frozen. Yep. I mean, there were like tenants in the hotel, because this was in the main lobby. This, was like, this wasn't in no restaurant, because they hired me to go, you know, like playing the lobby, uh -huh. checking in. And his parents were just average parents, probably in their, I'd say maybe early 40s at that time, raising this kid. He looked like something out of a mm -hmm. Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, but he yep. sounded like Liberace when he exactly, played. exactly. So I don't know whatever became of this young man. I, I had I wanted to keep in touch with him, but that's kind of hard to do when you're like dealing with teenagers. It you is. Know? Yeah. And, but that was a fun experience when I saw that. I mean, I was frozen. His parents were smiling. Everybody at the hotel was looking at that kid like. Yep. And, you know, if they had not heard this young man play, they would have never known. Exactly. That this kid was, he was probably one of those prodigy kids just going through. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, whatever he was going through. But that was a fun experience. Very fun experience. It was such a joy to see this, yep. this young man. And I wonder if he kept up his plan. Mm -hmm. Who knows? I don't know. It's been, what, it was like 20 years. Yeah. But, yeah. You know, to sum this up, because we're almost out of time, people should not judge a book by its cover. If you've got young teens and they're going through what they're going through, just listen. Try to get inside their head and hear what's going on. Absolutely. It might surprise you. Yeah, exactly. And you may not think your kid is as bad as you think he is because he's walking around with a pointed head yeah. or something, you know, or whatever he's doing. Now, I'm not talking about that unhealthy stuff like gang banging and all exactly. that. I'm talking about exactly. just a normal you know, growing pain exactly. and stuff like that. 
And on that note, this has been an interesting uh, conversation mm-hmm. here, and I'm glad we could touch mild. I don't, I don't want to say political. That's not the right. Yeah, thing. yeah. Just life. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, life. Any final things you want to say before we sign off on this here? Mm-hmm. Let's see. <laughs> A new surreal joke to lighten the mood because it's been fascinating. Uh, have I told this one? I don't think I, don't I have. Know. There were these um, three algebra. There were these. No, there were these two algebra books, and they were splashing around in two different coffee cups. Isn't that surreal? <laughs> then this one washing machine came along and said, "Oh, I can't see around that." Ha 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 ha! <laughs> Wasn't that hilarious? <laughs> I guess. No, I think it's hilarious. Huh? <laughs> yeah, but that—that's—that's that's the great way to end this. Time. Yes. But thanks for taking time to just uh, certainly, talk. certainly. And I did appreciate the talking. You know, I think it was very country, good. Yeah. Country music, the punk, and growing up. And, I love it. I love it. And I think it's a universal thing. I think all kids love yes, really that. Yes. Yes, indeed. And stuff like that. And I think that's something that's been going on since the invention of having kids. I oh, guess. probably. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. And I know my birth mom was the thing, oh man, where did I get ASAP from? Yeah. <laughs> she probably said, oh, God, please let me put this yeah. kid back where he came from. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm sure my mother must have thought that about me a lot. Mm-hmm. But, you know, and I know my other mom loves me dearly, dearly mm-hmm. too, so that's I'm lucky to have her. Mm-hmm. So on that note, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for being part of ASAP Cafe. And we're going to sign off here and uh, get ready for show number two. So on behalf of myself... Affection yeah. on Aging Rocker. Come on in, Teresa. Have a seat. I'm yep. going to sign out and we're getting ready for show number two. The lovely Teresa Tuigo. You can just stand right there. We were just Hi. talking about growing up in the punk rock movement and all that yep. fun stuff. Yep. And we'll, we can continue because we have our second guest coming too. Yep. So until our next show, ladies and gentlemen, I am ASAP. This is Emmett and Teresa Maranatha. Bye. <laughs> You just stand right there and don't move until I turn everything off because last week we had an accident because the camera wouldn't shut off last week. (laughs) So we'll fix that problem.